Look out, footy's back, g'day, I'm Josh Hunt. Wait, no I'm not, I do have a booming left leg however. Mm. I don't have calves the size of Josh no. Hunt either though. Especially with the giant gash in one of them at the moment. I am James Clements, this is the AFL Today Show, I'm your host. I'm joined by two of my very best friends on the planet, it is Alex Donnelly over there. That's, That's the nicest thing ever. <laughs> Literally the nicest thing you said to me in two years. It's two years I've been at this company tomorrow. Yeah. And there's the little fella, the stats player. Oh, I have to say something annoying. Uh, yeah, that is genuinely the nicest intro we've ever had. So thanks, Jim. That's right. That's not bad. That's very nice of you to say. For a bloke who's got a head bigger than the rest of his body, that's very, very, oh, very nice. I said you. Jeez, you and Josh Hart are fighting but for the biggest But clearly it works because he's got a girlfriend now. It does. Yeah, just unnecessary foot, part of the show. Foot, six foot two on his Tinder bio. That's all right. <laughs> uh, we also have special guest, friend of the show, Big J journalist, Simi and Thomas Wilson, jumping on to talk all things Radelaide related. Mm. Yeah. Talking port because they're second on the ladder, aren't they? Apparently. Pretty good. And uh, <laughs> yes, also the Crom, who are just like doing things. Anyway, so subscribe to our YouTube channel, get right around all the socials, because footy is back. Let's do it. It is the midweek news ticker. Tonight, there's not much news this week, is there? I'm not like <laughs> three pages worth of news. Yeah. I'm going to wear my voice doing this. Dyson Heppel retired. Cool. No, he, he's Rank all legend. your favourite players who had dreadies. Scott Pendlebury. Dyson Heppel. Xavier Rudd. <laughs> Heritier Lumumba. I oh, yeah. Lumumba, yeah. Not bad. I can't Travis Varco. Did he have dreads? Mark Williams. A couple of good oh, ones. Oh, Spider. Spider. Yeah. Yeah. No, Andreas. Andreas. Yeah. Oh, no. Andreas, Andreas Everett when he was at Carlton. Everett, yeah. Actually, Everett. Fev. Yeah. Fev's, Fev's my favorite one. Don't mind it's it. good that we could cover like 10 like that. Oh, I thought I only yeah. had a couple, but there's, there's good stuff. Other. Dyson Epple, though, was pretty good. Yeah. Played for a long time. Five years as a captain as well. That's an MBNF. Uh, only once an All-Australian. Yeah, it feels right. In 252 games. No, yeah, that's all right. I'll talk about more Dyson Heppel stuff in a second, but awesome, awesome servant. Off, of the on and off the club. field. Yeah. On and off the field. He's, a great he's, a, he's just a great man. Uh, horrible tattoos, though. Just a couple of little flash tattoos. You're like, ooh, nah. Better or worse than Lockie Neal's? Oh, Lockie Neal's has some stickers. Yeah. I actually don't mind, to be honest. Better Lockie or worse Neal's than Livers. Livers are awesome. Livers are fantastic. <laughs> Dyson Heppel's like the, oh, I got a tattoo as a joke. And you're like, oh, that, you know, they last forever, <laughs> right? He's like, oh, I got dead. Sucked in. It's like me. I know I almost got a Delhi Australia yeah, logo tattoo. Yeah, that's right. Well, you're, supposed, you're still supposed to, right? No, I think I won the tipping. So oh, sucked yeah. <laughs> anyway, on your Dyson Apple. Um, the fun th part of this was like Essendon fighting for their season. Yeah. And Brad Scott came out and was like, well, we might not get a farewell game. Oh, we've, we've got to put all our best players forward. So like, isn't that what you've been doing? Yeah. yeah. And you still stink. So if so, they lose this week, he'll get a game anyway. Yeah, that's it's pretty much it's yeah. Lose to Sydney, get the farewell game the following week. I reckon against, that. Uh, I don't know who they're playing the following week. Have a quick look for some reason. Doesn't Nothing's matter. Loading right now. Brisbane at the Gabba. Brisbane at the Gabba. Oh, what a great right. way to farewell your season. <laughs> Getting smashed by fifteen goals. But that is <laughs> that's, that's Dyson's career. I actually love that idea though because there is Brisbane versus Essendon is one of the great kit match. It's a great night footy matchup. Yeah, kit matchup in terms of kits. Okay. Classic. It's also a Joey Duckett's revenge game. Love that. Yep. Uh, sticking with Essendon, however, my good mate, Jai Coldwell. You're a good mate. Well, I talked him up as much as anybody possibly could. Pre everybody jumping on him and Supercoach. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Just say it. Top six. Here we go. Top yep. six forward. Yep. Uh, he signed an extension, which is kind of cool, which is well deserved. I'll talk about him again in a second, but awesome for a GWS outcast basically right? wasn't an outcast he tried to force a move exactly and so like he was just like i'm not getting any run now he's getting played in the midfield of essen and they're like wait you're awesome and everyone's like yeah he's awesome so he got paid yep uh and there's a little note there about sad sad el holy yes he's like an up-and-coming sort of he, it was a mid-season pick yes. yeah so he's he's re-signed hasn't he they gave him an extra year extra okay because he because he got hurt as soon as he landed at the club like, oh that sucks that's sad right. el holy great yep. job yes we're very proud of you get the money Alex Neil Bullen, the rats are fleeing the sinking ship of Melbourne. Alex Neil Bullen, A and B. Love Alex. Well, Alex Neil Bullen, anytime goal should actually be his full name. Well, Alex Neil Bullen, anytime goal, first quarter. Like that. Yeah, first quarter. Requesting goal. a trade to a state. He doesn't care what team. Yep. Yeah. He's like, just get me to South Australia. He's like us before Gather Round. It's like, just, just get, get us there. to South Australia. We don't just care where we are. Get us there. Yep. We're going to make Stats Boy drive us. It doesn't matter. No. Just get us to South <laughs> we Australia. We need to plan next year. And so Stats Boy is like, man, Gamby's out the stress. Like, shut up, Stats Boy. If I'm in a car, you, you guys are not in that. That would be horrible. This is tough <laughs> for Melbourne. He's because... come out, but apparently there is a big family reason behind it, and he's requested privacy, mm. so we don't know what delves yeah, into it. Yeah, family but reasons, yes. For me, I appreciate how 
sensible the D's have been about this, coming out with this statement going, yep, we'll support him. Uh, he's been a great servant to the club, but we'll get him to South Australia, whoever. Basically, whoever gives him the best deal. Well, the tricky part is obviously the Dan Houston mooted move to Melbourne. Why would he want to go to Melbourne? That is That's, so random. Well, Porter, yeah. Porter also just like, we don't want to send him to Melbourne. This is where I'd, say, this is where I'd say, if I'm Dan Houston, go to North because North's, yeah, a, better, go North's to North. a better club to go to than actual he's Melbourne. He's 27. By the time North are good, he's retired. But That's the Ds true. are going down and, the, and North are going up. I don't know. We're, we're, we're very, very slowly going up. But yeah, I know. I have faith. Stats Point going. being, I don't know. Maybe he is make weight. No, Dan Houston is worth up. way more than Alex No, but Neal the board. thing is you send A and B out. And a second and, rounder. And a second rounder or maybe a first mm. in the future uh, to go with it. Ugh. I reckon he'll uh, Maybe get staying. other stuff back, maybe some swaps. What about the Crows? What, what if he ends up at the Crows? Well, they're going after the Cocious now, so lots going on. Lots going on. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, but A and B, it's a tough one because he's been such a good uh, bit part you won't, role player. You, they won't – people. People who don't watch Melbourne close enough won't understand how important he is until he leaves. I think he's all right, but he, uh, he's this still not like point. a star. He's not this a star. Is he's a role player and a high-end role player. Mm. But at the same time, when was the last time you were like, you know, geez, Alex Neil Bullen just won them that game. Yep. Like yeah, every second year of his career, he's kicked less than 10 goals. Like that's not exciting me much at all. He's popped up every so often for like these nice little snags that gets the team going. And then for the rest of the game, you're like... He's still out there. Did he get subbed? What's going on? Either way, I still think he's a very good player. I think he's very good as well. Carlton have met with Nick Haynes. Yeah. Were you due to have a GWS player come across? Stephen Silvani's back in charge. We're getting all the Giants. You just always just love the Giants players. We do. Uh, at the same time, I mean, he's Very kind done. of, I don't know, Not out getting of again. favour. And, well, he's 32 as well. 31 so at the moment. 32, 32 next season. Oh, 30, 32 next season, yes. Carlton also don't have any oh, more bodies right? at this point. Uh, but this is prime trade season as well. Everyone's just like He's 32 the now, so I don't know what you guys are on. Right? Really? Yeah. Like, reports are weird and wrong. Fix it, R- everybody reports. else. <laughs> okay. Anywho, Luke Parker is open to a move at the end of the season, which I like a lot because How do you feel about John it? Longmire hates him. I, su- I said it halfway through exactly, the year that yeah. Luke Parker will probably leave at the end of the year because he can't get a game. Um, he'd be a perfect player to go go at north and be on a half-forward flank rotating through the middle. He can join his good buddy Dylan Stevens. Yeah. In oh, the twos. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Sticking with Melbourne, though, going back there. So there's been so much sort of back and forth about A and B. This also came out because Clayton Oliver trade rumours are floating around, but also because Christian Petrarca on the weekend, it did break. He's like, oh, geez, I'm not very happy here. And everyone's like, Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> with the horror show that is Melbourne, you're not happy with this horror show, but it's a horror show. Why don't you like it, Christian? Maybe don't Get s- back in the kitchen. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Maybe don't sign five years if you're not if you're not happy. That's that's uh he signed pretty dumb. seven. Or seven, was it? Yeah, five more years. Yeah. That's a bit ridiculous. Yes, because a player's gonna say no to a million dollar year for a million dollar deal. Any team for seven would offer years. him any team would offer him that much money. Well, this two He's years ago two years ago, time. Melbourne were like unbeatable and yeah. thinking they're gonna be amazing. It's and easy to say in hindsight. Everything's yeah. gone downhill in the last two years. Yeah, Melbourne the first half of twenty twenty two two were basically Carlton up to round seventeen <laughs> this year. We're Sydney um, to round thirteen. <laughs> yes. A this scrambled everybody into action at Melbourne to where it was David Schwartz on radio going why does he always pop up for we need it. We need a top he down, works for inside out review of the entire organisation. It's like, you're probably yeah, right. Yeah. Also, why is he, why are you now at the go-to quote machine? I know. He Melbourne? Is, yeah. it's, it's literally your job just to talk this stuff yeah. out. Why are we now going, well, that's just, that's just news. It's like, no, it's his job. Yeah. And <laughs> Gary Lyon was like, not a chance in hell that he gets traded. No, if I someone, I, there's no chance. I don't think. Hey, if someone comes... With the right offer, the D's are probably D's can say yes. They literally they will cook their whole like team lineup. Their team ball. is cooked. That's the point because Clayton a lot Oliver of is cooked. Stephen May keeps getting injured. Mm. Gorn is thirty seven. It feels like he's <laughs> this matter. close to breaking down completely. This list is stuffed. I don't know. Taj Roy Woden look good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Gary Pert is out there going. Oh, which we're really going to dig into this. My favorite thing is that Broden's just gone, I yeah, yeah Broden over. Kelly. Yeah. That was funny. Like, that's out of my playbook, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just give me the job Common of sense. being the bloke in charge and I'll fix it. I will not, but give me money and I'll give it a crack. Like, let's, like, let's you go. You can't do worse. Vice President of Common, effing sense. It's not hard, right? Yep. Like, just let's go. Uh, Melbourne, though, my favorite thing about the D's, and most Demons fans will sort of agree, it's like, the, no, nah, no, nah, there's nothing to see here. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
You can only do that for so long. It's bad. Well, yeah, especially around Clary. It's like you have a couple of months of no nothing to do with Clary in the media, and then you're like, oh, he's back. His body is just broken. <laughs> Speaking of which, he's out for the rest of the season. PCL, sore ribs, hand surgery. I don't know, punching walls. I was about to say, he, he couldn't run on Saturday, so it makes sense. He was cooked on the weekend, so yeah. that yeah does, does make a lot Probably of sense. should have shut him down round one. Uh, it's because he didn't do a pre-season gym. That's why yeah, well, well injuries, pre-season yeah. now. <laughs> Only had Actually, you might not even be able to do the next preseason if he's getting all these. Surgeries. It's going to be great when he runs out for Adelaide next year. It's a tough ah. one for your super coach team, though, if you have Clayton. Oh, God. Uh, speaking of other super coach ones, oh, Tim English. I got him. Out as well. Uh, Honestly, the dog might be better off without him. He's I feel like crap. Tim English has heard all the chatter about Tristan Cherry this weekend. He was like, oh, I don't want any bar of this. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. And bounces. Uh, Cherry, captain, super coach. Oh, my God. Cherry's going to dominate gonna this huge. dog's team now. Uh, Taylor Walker was out there looking like Ray Gun uh, on the ground. <laughs> Just doing some b boying, but it's also because he's got a detached retina. So yeah. yeah, how brutal! You might is have that? to do the Mason Cox glasses. Mm. That's just I, brutal. I'd retire before <laughs> I did that. <laughs> yeah. Does that yeah. have to be annoying as well? I was about to say because Tex has a little bit of swagger about him. I reckon you like, nah. Or you get like I don't know, get cool glasses and make you look like Rivers Cuomo from Weezer or something, yeah. like some really hardcore ones, or tinted ones. So it looks like you're out there shooting. Mason Cox's like those arms, yeah. Oh, Trucky glasses, yeah. that'd be sick. <laughs> speed dealers. What about speedies? Yeah, yeah get nice. the speed deal. Get the wrap around, uh, <laughs> the wrap around sick ones. That'd be it. Uh, Collingwood fans there are still out there sucking about freeze and fifties and travel. And How is this in the news part? Oh, it's because Alex has got a uh, Alex got dragged on the internet. Which I is still funny. am. My oh. phone hasn't stopped blowing up since Friday. Oh. Uh, it's because Alex had a crack at some Collingwood fans and Collingwood fans don't uh, know common sense or understand logic. Well, no. My favorite thing is the Twitter replies. Everyone whenever, is very smart on Twitter. Whenever you've got <laughs> your <laughs> team colors or. Stripes in your life instantly identifiable as a Collingwood fan. Yeah, you know you've hit a nerve, <laughs> and it was great. Not only did Alex hit a nerve, he severed the nerve, wrapped it around himself, and then hung him with it. Hung himself <laughs> with it. It was pretty epic. Uh, so go check that out on the old tweet machines. Uh, it's a lot of sooking about travel, home tenants playing at the MCG against Collingwood fans, and then basically having a big, big, big sook about well, maybe we'll boycott. I Next saw time that. Yeah. SCG, so, which is one of the funniest go, ones. Mate, go ahead, boycott the SCG. One, the stadium will smell great. Two, <laughs> the Swans have had 10 games at the SCG this year. Collingwood Sydney was the sixth highest of the 10. So North Melbourne had a thousand less. So North Melbourne brings a better crowd. Yeah. I dig it. Keep digging that hole, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> go on, boycott it. I dare you. They would never there's, there's like two fans that might boycott it. There's like there's about I'm I'm surprised they're allowed out of the state, to be it, honest. There's just more nuffies at Collingwood because they've got more fans. They've That's... also got more ankle bracelets per capita than <laughs> yeah. any other than any other. Well, we want to keep our Collingwood fans there. <laughs> nah, you. You're all great. <laughs> Collingwood fans, to be honest, are the most fun one because they're the, clearly the most insane. Yeah. And it's like we were out there on the hill for that Hawthorne <laughs> oh. Collingwood game at Gun Around. Yeah. It got ugly. Your mate nearly crash tackled me when they kicked a goal. He was so pumped. Like, oh my god, this is amazing! It was pretty gnarly. Uh, we also have a couple of little free updates. Sean Darcy, Josh Tracy, both looking to uh, try to prove their fitness before they play the Giants this weekend in right? Sydney. So yep. it's going to be a big sort of uh, Thursday night teams episode action for Josh Tracy, whether or not yep. he makes the plane. Yep. And Sean Darcy, good, same thing. Good friend Eliza Riley has said that Tracy is unlikely, then likely. Okay. Checks out. There's always like at least a two-week injury, that one. Yeah. And then finally, the biggest news of this week has been oh Carlton. God. Absolutely decimated. So decimated is a often uh, wrongly used word, stats boy. Yeah. It well, says you with using words wrong, but anyway. Sure. Yeah. So... <laughs> decimated is like the uh, well, the act of like taking out one out of like every certain specific amount. Okay. Carnage is a better one, right? Carnage, carnage is yeah, off, I like carnage, that adage. Carnage I like was that what one. happened to Brisbane in that Gold Coast game. This is a decimation. This is decimated. So, Kerno out. Mackay, out. Saad, out. Jack Martin, out. Boyd's done for the season. Fogarty's done for the season as well. So That's six three people. of your four best forwards. But right? it's also like they've got no forward line. Yeah. Their so, forward line has literally been decimated. I'll get to that in one second. Because I've got a couple of thoughts about this Blues situation. Every one of them has a lower leg injury, which is hilarious. Yeah. If I didn't have stitches in my leg and I couldn't walk. uh, (laughs) You'd be a chance. I'm just saying, put my hand up. Is Jack, is uh, Silvani a chance? How's his knee going? Surely you could put him in the goal square. (sighs) If only. But Kerno out for one to two weeks, Harry out for one to two weeks, Saad one to two, uh, and Martin one to two, which I think the Saad and Martin one to two are wildly optimistic. Yeah, they're done. 
they're the Assad's pack done, them up. Just yeah. put him in there with if Adam they Sharma. Somehow, if they somehow fall into the finals, maybe they're good for week one. Ugh. Maybe. Yeah, but then the problem is they may tear a hamstring in the first 10 minutes and you've got no players. Can, Again. You, can you bring back Fev? He's still around. He I said he was he, available. He did put his hand up on Twitter. Yeah, he did. Because oh, right. I just sit me in the goal square. <laughs> Midweek losers and winners of the week. Losers. Obviously, the Carlton injury list being at 17. 17. That is <laughs> almost half. There is of a your graphic list. of an entire half decent football team <laughs> in your injury on the ground, except for one half pack flanker. Would that team, would that injury team beat the team you'd run out this weekend? I oh, reckon it, it would. would. It's got like three of their best I mean, it, it doesn't have Cripps and Sam Osh, but you've got TDK in the middle. You've still got Harry and Charlie up forward. You've got the last three Coleman medalists Yeah, <laughs> on that team, on the injured, on the injured team. Not bad. You've also got March back down at fullback. But like, I think Doherty. Carlton obviously <laughs> loses. They were second uh, on the ladder two rounds ago. Or round wow. 20. Three, three, round three 20. weeks ago. Heading, heading into round 20. Uh, they are now ninth. They are missing 11 players from the prelim team from last year. That is, 11. again, 11 That's is wild. half the team that you run out there on a day. Brilliant. So not great. Uh, other losers, those in charge at Melbourne. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Feel that? Yeah, the culture's great great at Melbourne, apparently. That is the flame being uh, just basically just going, eh, there we go, how do you like that, how do you like that? <laughs> We're turning it up, turning it up. Other winners, though, get paid, son, Jai Coldwell. I love this. I love Jai Coldwell. He brings a lot to this Essendon team that they don't sort of have. It was crap on the weekend, but he, wasn't that, great he has weekend, been very good. None of Essendon was great on the weekend. Exactly. But still, <laughs> he's awesome. He's getting paid. It's a great story. And the fact that he sort of moved to the midfield over the last, what, month and a bit? Yep. And he's been a gun. Over his I injury problems as well. Good on him. The other winner, Thrillthorpe. Yeah. Riley Thrillthorpe. Where's this come from? I don't like the idea of shaving your beard for charity. Well, you so were, I've got a when was the beard. last time you shaved your beard? You would have to do like the world's biggest. <laughs> I'm looking at you, stats boy. <laughs> donation to a charity oh. to sh- shave the beard. Well, but he's got 200 grand, so no, nah, not yeah, well, but charity. He's 22, and like he does have a very personal connection. So this is uh, for Filthy's fundraiser, which is fun uh, to shave his beard. He started growing it obviously, obviously after he hurt his knee. So it's only six months, but it was very, very nice. It's beard. very Good nice. Beard. It's yeah. very thick, and I'm like, I like this. And, like, that's the exact point where you can shave a beard because you can just grow it back. So, <laughs> question. It's, like, it's not that chaos. Yeah, it's yeah. been six months. Six months is not a giant amount of time for a beard. So The question is, is he doing it next week during the week before the game or is he doing it after their last game? Because I – His powers come from – I want to test the powers of Thriller. <laughs> because <laughs> if he's shaving beard. it before the Swans game, which is their final game, it would be interesting to see if he kicks a goal or not because if he doesn't, it's all the beard. He's less – Like Mason Redman cutting his hair. Mm. Jed Walter cutting Jed his Jed Walter, hair. yeah. And I do take a bit of a umbrage, another great word, yeah. at uh, some of the from some Harry of the reporting on this of like, oh, his long and luscious beard. It's, like, it's not that long. It like, just makes him look like a he, psychopath. He looks awesome. Yeah. Like, Compared it, to yours, it's not long, obviously. It just but, fits his head yeah. nicely. Yeah. It's like very good. What? But also I think his aunt uh, battled breast cancer okay. and stuff like that. So it's a very personal story for him, which is very cool. That's nice. So that you can, yeah, they're doing this Google it, donate it. some coin. And off you go. So he's 22. Um, He's only 22. Holy moly. And to grow that beard is pretty epic, so good on him. Uh, <laughs> Dude rules. Give him hell. Thriller. Right. Let's do some yeah, nahs. Hey, does Dyson Heppel deserve a farewell? Deserve. I put that word in a there. A farewell game. Yeah, nah. Mine depends on the result on Friday night if I'm a yeah or a nah. They're not going to make finals. Yeah. Yeah, he's a club legend. He's done so much, like I said, on and off the field. Give him a farewell game. Him playing is not going to affect their season. What does your club stand for, Essendon? Mm. This is oh, a moment where you go, it. look, we're trying to create. They can still make finals. Exactly. So you don't play him this week, give him one the week after. But no, no, if, if, if they win if, this yeah, week. If they win this week, roll him out there then. He goes out a hero regardless. I or if they lose, just roll him out against Brisbane as the farewell because you're not going to make. Finals. Could you put him as the sub even? And then you that's could, you pretty cheap. No, nah, it's a slap in the face. That, they uh, did that to Andrew Gaff last week. They did. So, what does your team stand for? What does your club stand for? Heppel is as Essendon as they come. Yeah. Right. Kid, he was a fan. Played for them. Had opportunities to leave. Was the captain. Always captain in the Stuff. toughest time. Exactly. Marcus was talking about. My yeah. point here is. He quite literally could not have played 252 games for the Bombers over 14 years at a worse point in their existence. Yeah. He's, he's, you're probably right there. <laughs> no, no, no. 
I am right. You are. He's, he's, <laughs> because I dug into it, Stats Boy. <laughs> yes. Hey, Jim, how do you deal with Carlton sucking? Well, I'm going to look at Essendon sucking. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it, boys. Come on. You have to go back to World War II to find I'm good. a level of mediocrity equaling the last 14 years of Bombers football. Really? In fact, <laughs> this is the worst period, essentially, of their in, in terms of win percentages per year of their entire existence from 2002 to 2024. Quite literally, there was like these lean periods in like the 50s when they only won a couple of games. But book ended by pretty decent seasons here and there. 14 years is a really, really long time in football. They have won 14 games exactly once in that time. Ooh. In those 14, in those, well, in that year. That, well, in that stretch. Which in is that incredible. stretch, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So from 2002 to 2024, it's quite So it's like Mark Murphy, like, never playing finals too. Yes. There's a few, part. we could do that with a few Blues players. Uh, that's who's right. the, who, no, it's not Mark Murphy. There's another player that's the, the losingest player of all time. Oh, I can't remember who it is. No, Bootsma. Go back to you on that one. Clash, classic Bootsma. But anyway, it? look, to go all the way back to World War II, diggity diggity two, uh, 1945, I think, is when they sort of had like a stretch that was roughly through to the 30s. Yeah. Where you're like... It's a pretty so different even game. North Melbourne's had a fifteen win season in the last. Yeah, 20. we made we made two prelims. Thank you very much. Yeah, but you could have yeah. won thirteen games and stuck in the finals. Sure. Yeah, we made, nice we made one. some good news. It is a tough one though. Dyson Apple, all time legend of the club. Yeah, right on him. Hey, is Craig McRae a bit of a sook? Yeah, nah. Yeah, we already touched on this. Yeah, massive sook. What is he? What is he talking about? They play. What, did, what was the stat? You had uh, fourteen good, games at the MCG this year with another three at Marvel. Last year they played seventeen games in total at the MCG. Was, actually, that's what it was. It was like, they last seventy six. They've only but, played eighteen away from the G. So shut Alex, up, Craig McRae. They've McCray. got to play no, against no, co-tenants, yeah. Alex. But they've got to play co-tenants at the MCG. I've been. <laughs> Those other teams also play there. <laughs> yeah. And then also saying, oh, it would have been a 50 if it was at the MCG. And then they then someone rolls out the clip of him going, that's loser talk. We don't want to do that. You know what that was, Craig McRae? Loser talk. Uh, Absolutely. Was this your day? Please explain by the AFL. Fair enough. He explained it by going, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I misspoke. It's like, yeah, did you? It's what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. And then it came out that Collingwood do have like the third most freeze four this season as well. Okay. So behind Gold Coast and Carlton. Remarkable. Yeah, you go. It used to always be West Coast with their... Uh, Richmond yeah, to the worst, and I see Richmond fans complaining. The reason why you're last on the free kicks table is because you you're second to the footy. You don't have the ball. Yeah, <laughs> you're second to the footy. Same as North. Craig McRae, Sook confirmed by Alex Donnelly. Uh, will Clary be at the D's next year? Clayton Oliver, will he be a Melbourne Demon stats boy? Yeah, nah. I'll go, yeah. I, I, if I'm another club, I don't want him. He's just a head case at the moment. So I like that, Alex. Keep him at Melbourne. Nah, fresh start. Get him out of Melbourne. Ooh. Gold Coast Suns. Is he going to probably fit Crest. well in at Adelaide? There's a few crazy guys there. Maybe he likes pies. Villies? Yeah. Villies pies, yeah. Maybe pie he floaters? likes Imperial Pints. Pie floated. Imperial Maybe pints, he goes yeah. to Frio. I might go Just to Adelaide. Go hang out. No one cares. Go I'm hang out with go. what? Caleb Sarong. That'd be pretty cool, actually. actually not that That's bad. a good midfield. <laughs> right. This is the big one. I've dug, it, dug into this a little bit. <laughs> this is like your therapy session. It really it? is. Yeah, I've enjoyed cool. this a lot. Nice. Do the Blues get a pass this year with all the, with 17 players on the injury list? That's a bit yeah, late. Yeah, nah. No. No. Nah, they don't. No. <laughs> they oh, were cooked. Weird. I thought you put this in because you wanted to They were cooked healthy anyway. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So You were getting smashed before everyone went down on, on Sunday. Just what those injuries did was stopping a potential miracle comeback from happening again. Exactly, yeah. We've seen throughout the year good teams have cut up Carlton on rebound and transition, they were, what, the 15th worst team on defense this yep, year? Yep. So regardless, they were cooked. It's not a premiership profile. Exactly. So earlier on in the season, there was a, at least the outline of a premiership profile, and it was round 15 yep. when they beat the Geelong Cats. They held the Cats to 75. Yep. The Cats being one of the best offenses in the AFL this season. They beat them by 63 points at the G. It was a great turnaround. They were lost to the Cats by, at, by, I by six, week, Geelong, uh, six weeks prior. Geelong cooked and Carlton Premiership contenders that night. I can't believe I got that one so wrong. I think a, a lot of people I'm going to own that. A lot of people had yeah, Carlton right up. That but, was, the, but that was Geelong. Dumb. Yeah, Geelong. Yeah. But I, the real turning point came after the – I don't know. They got Freaky Friday. They peed into something weird. At, at like, Icon Park. At No, at the Showgrounds. Ah. Uh, the Showgrounds right, Stadium. Right. After there, the first there is quarter, a lagoon near there. The first <laughs> quarter against GWS, Carlton put up 51 points. It was insane. They were leading by 36. They then gave up the ghost and lost that game by two goals. They then lost to the Bulldogs. They then only just snuck over the line against North Melbourne. They then lost to Port. They then lost to Collingwood. Then then got smashed by Hawthorne. These are all that was before the, the injuries as well. Yeah. Well, like there were still the major injuries. injuries. There was like 
the Weeders injury. Mm. There was the silly Chera bringing him back. Yeah. And like I've yelled about this time and time again, uh, the Hewitt Kennedy screw around in that GWS game and then in the next one where it's like, oh, we'll just drop George Hewitt. He'd averaged 21 touches a game and they'd won the previous five. And they're like, ah, oh, well, Chera. Don't change the winning form. Always felt like he was a little bit undercooked as soon as he came back. Hasn't been able to yeah. get any of the ball anyway. They brought him back a little bit too early. They then screwed around Matt Kennedy. He hurt his knee, was thought about as a sub, started anyway, and then all just went pear shaped from there. The thing is, from across, was it rounds one through 16 mm-hmm. to 17 to 22, the contested numbers went from first to 10th. That's First to 10. A huge drop off. Their yeah. scores from clearance differential went from 11th to 16th. Yeah. No team has given up more scores from defensive 50 stoppages. And they were second in points for. They are now 12th. Points against, they were 13th. They're now 15th. Yeah, it so still sucks. Continue to suck. The turnover score differential for me is massive. Second, now you're ninth. That stinks. Yeah. yeah. To score off turnovers is so crucial yeah, in the yeah. AFL right pace now. on the counter-attack. Centre bounce score, score differentials. They've gone from 7th to 15th. That's unbelievable. The scores inside 50, they've gone from 1st to 7th. So this is in their own inside yep. 50. Goals per inside 50, 1st to 12th. Yeah, that sounds oh, about right. Oh, God. And in terms of accuracy, 2nd to 9th. So this leads into they won't make the finals. Yeah, nah. Yeah, they won't. Because I said they won't. They're not going to make finals. They won't make, so I'm going to say Double nah. Because I think they will. You still... think they will? They're, 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 they're they have to beat the every, Eagles this week. They are every chance of losing to they're West Coast. They're going to lose to West Coast. A lot more outs than I thought, but I think I'm still going to tip the Blues. They are going I to lose. I saw West well, Coast on the weekend. They, they were, were so bad. They they beat North Melbourne. I know, but North, North it was just both teams were horrible. They couldn't hit a pass. And then other than uh, West Coast in the last game. We just talked about Carlton's efficiency going inside 450. Jeremy McGovern might have 40 possessions. I'm still going the Blues, I think. Jeremy McGovern's going to be playing on Mitch McGovern at this point. Yeah, I think he will. They're going to have to throw Lewis Young and McGovern forward. They'll probably bring up Jackson Binns and Harry Lemmy. Imagine if you uh, play well. I've never happy. heard of the second dude you just mentioned. Harry Lemmy, gun. Absolutely gun. <laughs> gun. Heard of Jackson Binns. Jackson Binns is all right. Lemmy's actually in pretty good form in the v, uh, VFL, but anyway. Uh, Jack Carroll and Corey Durden, they probably come back in. But I guess if we're rolling out a forward line of uh, Matt Owies, Corey Durden, and uh, Jesse Motlop, we're just going full mosquito fleet. Let's Genuinely, don't kick it up in the air. Just dribble on the That's ground. A, but the problem is Sam Walsh gets it and just goes... Just, just kick speed. it on the ground, Sam. Either way, Carton are cooked. Pack her up, boys. We are done. Yep. All right, let's go to our chat. Well, the boys chat with Simeon Thomas Wilson to talk all things Radelaide right after this. All right, AFL Today, we're bringing the big guns across from Adelaide. Simeon Thomas Wilson joins us. It is a showdown week. How are the vibes? <laughs> Yeah, no, hey, hey guys, um, it's always an interesting time of week when it's showdown week. It's such a big rivalry. And, yeah, um, the vibes are actually, from the Port's perspective, are a bit down from where they normally are. Like, you know, they're doing really well. They've, they've got their season back on track. They, you know, they're really doing well. But it's not – it's a little bit different to the last couple of showdowns from a Port perspective. So it's pretty clear that Darcy Fogarty, just after the game, he's got his chest out. He's feeling good. He's pumped <laughs> the dogs. He's like, hey, Port. We're going to ruin your season. Four in a row, baby. Bit of that coming around from Port because, you know, they need to win a showdown, one, to stop losing and being the biggest losers in South Australia, and two, to make the top four. Not wrong. Yeah, yeah so if Darcy Foggy's come out in the last couple of years, especially, I think, I think what it was at the end of 2022, we saw the Port come out and say, we hate the Crows, you know, they're arrogant and entitled, but there's been <laughs> nothing of this so far. And it was just out at Connor Rosie's presser, and he pretty much said he was like, yeah, this is a tactic that we're doing this year, this time around. I think they're focusing on actually trying to get the win rather than talking and, um, yeah, saying how much they hate the Crows. <laughs> oh, that feels like that they're in their own heads about this already. Well, I think it's such a good rivalry. Like, a lot of the other rivalries aren't as public, whereas yeah. these two, you just know they hate each other, which is what we love. Yeah, yeah but th- it seems like they're like, oh, we can't say anything in case we lose. Oh, we better not say anything. So it's like, <laughs> and Adelaide just like, yeah, well, our season's over, so you know what? They can say Let's go. Like, yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, more importantly... Prison bars back this week. Yes. Surely everyone in Port Adelaide is up and about that the prison bars are back. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're loving it. They're um, yeah, home game, home showdown. They get the prison bars. They're going to be up and about. Although, yeah, last time they wore them, they lost. So they'll be hoping for it to be a better uh, omen this time. Bad omens, prison bars. But yes, P- Port Adelaide, last time we had you on, people were burning effigies out the front of Alberton. And <laughs> Well, Ken has proven that he's absolutely Ken enough. What has turned this around? Has it just been trusting wow. the process and backing the boys in, or what's the deal? Because all of a sudden they're second. Yeah, it's it's been quite incredible, hasn't it? I mean, 
I think what they said is they kind of didn't, as much as we were saying it was the end of the world, it was the end of Ken, I think they were trying to stay, say, hang on, season still to play for, let's yeah. keep going. They get that win against St Kilda, which was just as scrappy as all, you know, and then all of a sudden, I guess they get a bit of luck and they have to get some key players back from injury and some people hit form. And, yeah, it's quite incredible how it's changed. I think everything's kind of maybe falling into place for them at the right time to, you know, like at least have a crack at something in September. Is there still a chance, you know, because you think about it, they beat the Swans by 100, but they lost to the Gold Coast. They had that fall-in win against St Kilda. Like their form's doing a bit of these ones well, still. Even against Melbourne on the weekend, they weren't very convincing. Yeah, mm. are they a little bit worried about how convincing they're, they're going at the moment? Yeah, it's a hard one. I mean, yeah, obviously the Swans win, that was as convincing as you're going to see. And then, yeah, like, um, so I guess the next two games are going to show a fair bit because, you you know, you always throw the form, the ladder positions out the window when it comes to the showdown. And then Freo, Freo at um, Optus could be a tough end to enter the home and away season. So, yeah, these next two weeks are going to be interesting to see what kind of form they actually come into um, the finals at. So what is a pass mark for Ken here? Because at the start of the season, before everything goes on, we go back to February and we all thought he's got to make a prelim or Koshy's probably going to, you know, <laughs> send him to the Today Show because you know, no more Channel yeah, yeah. 7, yeah. straight to Channel 9. What is a pass mark for him here? Oh, yeah, I think prelim. I, I actually, does he go around? Will he have the energy to go to go again after a prelim? Like, oh, yeah. I reckon maybe... The way that I could see him going around again, because you have that burning desire, is you if you got to a grand final loss, mm, like yeah. that's as a thing, like that's an easy one. Yeah, we got there, we can go one better. Prelim, I don't know. It's a hard. I think a prelim might be the pass mark, or yeah, at least making a grand final. But yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's so hard to tell now. It's yeah. like what, six weeks ago we thought it was done. Yeah, and now yeah. we're like. Is it? They've swapped hmm. with Carlton. I just had to think about that. It's pretty much just swapped the last six weeks. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be good. And then Carlton yeah. just absolutely uh, crapped the bed. I don't mind it. A <laughs> uh, bit on the injury front there. Uh, forwards, Todd Marshall, gone down again. Yeah. Uh, who else was injured last week? Um, I've uh, What Georgiades, what, what's the deal there? Because they're pretty important to Port, but Todd Marshall just can't take a trick. Mm. No, well, that's a scary, scary thing for him is that's just like third or fourth concussion in the last two years. Oh, so brutal. imagine third they're going to be really – Cautious of him. Um, Georgiatis, I think he's going to have a crack tonight at training for the power to see if he can come back. And, I mean, he would be a massive inclusion for them because he's been their best forward this year. I mean, it's kind of his forward line now as much as, you know, it used to be Charlie Dixon. So, yeah, he. I think he's going to try and test it tonight. But it might be that they go into the, the showdown with a forward line of Charlie Dixon, Asava Radigalia and Ollie Lord. Oh, that's which, gross. Yeah. <laughs> that is so yeah, gross. George Yardy's out of that lineup does, doesn't make it look anywhere near as good yeah. as it. Yeah. No. Uh, and finally, Dan Houston, obviously the words filtered across here mm. to Melbourne that he wants out and for some reason wants to go to the D's. Uh, mm. Does that look like sort of, I know he's got a long contract, but is that something where Port will play hardball and be like, no, nah, mate, you've got a contract? Yeah, I think they'll play hardball, but I'm, Reckon a deal will get done and Paul will get a fair bit for him. Like, yeah, I mean, now that Alex Neil Bullen's you know requested a trade back to SA, yeah. does he form part of the deal if Port are interested in him? You know, like that's kind of added to that. I think Port could get a pretty big haul for Houston. So, surely we'll mention that before we get on to the Crows. Neil Bullen, the news has come out this morning, he wants to be uh traded across to South Australia. We've already talked about this, but what's your sort of just initial thoughts, feelings, vibes? Where does he land? What club is more, most suitable for Alex Neil Bullen? I think the most suitable one is Port Adelaide by an absolute whisker. Like, yeah. I think he'd fit both clubs really well. Porter just a little bit more. They were in their premiership window, yeah. so you know a guy. They're both on the lookout for a guy who can play that medium forward role, like Neil Bullen. I mean, he would help the Crows if they want to bounce back. And then I guess, yeah, with um, but I think with Port, he'd just add. He'd just add something to that to a team that you know is going to play finals this year. Now, yeah. so I think he just slots in where he into yeah. the Crows where he plays that third forward because you think about they've gone after Will Haywood, but there's potential of Jack Lacocious. Not so it's a pretty good time to be in Adelaide. You got if you got Lacocious and Neil Bullen coming, one club's going to get good. one or the other. So it's not too bad. We'll have to wait and see though. Yeah. Speaking of the Crows. How frustrating is it to be a fan of this team right now? Well, I'm not a fan of them, but it would be. It would be very. <laughs> I'm not. Them, I don't support them, but it technically would be massively frustrating mm. because you see what they do against Western Bulldogs, and like you know, and you're, you're like, hang on, wait a minute. When the stuff they dished up at the start of the year, where you're like, this is as this is woeful. Like, yeah, it's just the the their I guess um 
levels between their best and their worst has been so it's so big at the moment. It's just yeah, it is, it is quite frustrating to watch. To watch. Well, they're, they're so frustrating. Well, you say that because they have they beat Essen in one of the games of the year, which is hilarious. They get absolutely embarrassed by Hawthorne. Probably should have beaten Geelong. And then they built the dogs. They lost like, to the cat. Oh, sorry, yeah. no, the cats, the tigers as well. At, oh, at that home. too. That, that's so, the worst loss, I think. Yeah. So I, I suppose given how bad the season's gone, everyone's like, there was the calls mid-year, you know, everyone out for Matty Nix and the whole board and restructure everything. Has that sort of cooled a little bit? And it's like, let's see how we go next year because it's gone quiet on the basically burn it down. Mm. Yeah, I think when it's, maybe it's just safe. Like, um, yeah, I think it's safe, especially like it, all the kind of calls did get a little bit um, reunited after the Hawthorne loss because that was just terrible. Yeah. And I think there's going to be changes in at least some some off-field things in terms of either trying to get some more experience around him or, or especially around the recruiting, I reckon. I, I could see some changes happening there. So, And finally on them, before we get to some off-field stuff, what is the missing link for the finals, mm. Berthy? Because at the start of the year, the stats boy here <laughs> said Adelaide top four, lock it in, Eddie, and... Yep. They've looked very far off it. What is that was what, my big call that didn't I suppose work Isaac well. Rankin missing seven games hasn't helped, but what's been missing this year for the Crows? James Riley. <laughs> oh, I like it. It's pretty simple. Yeah. One word answers. Uh Thriller. Apparently he's injured at training. What's the deal? We're yeah. panicking. We love Thriller. Um he I think, yeah, towards the end of it, he matched him, took a knock to his knee. Club reckon he should be fine. So That's good. yeah, he should be he should play in the showdown. Okay, yeah. so we avoid the panic stations there, but are the fans excited with how the thrillers come he back? He just looks awesome. He's much bigger. He's he's, he's got the beard. He just fits into the, that fold line so well, and everything's going through. Him. Yeah, do they all yeah, love him there as well? Yeah, that's another part of what I guess um, why they haven't gone as well as we wanted them yeah. and what we thought they would. You know, um, they everyone was kind of talking about how good Phil thought was going this preseason, you know, his breakout year. And then the, then the final minutes of the preseason game against West Coast, Brutal. there's his meniscus. Mm. <laughs> Until, and he's showing like, when he's come back, like he's looked, he's looked at why he went the number, number two in the, in his draft yeah. only behind um, Jamara. So yeah, he's, I guess him and Foggy D and Crow should be pretty excited about. Yeah, and finally, we'll touch on Tex because obviously he's missing an eyeball at the moment, getting surgery to <laughs> have everything put back in there. <laughs> One more year for the Texan, or are we sailing off? What are we doing here? Because I, I retired him earlier this year, yeah, and I, think and one more I year. shipped him off to the D's. I've just done everything <laughs> to get rid of him. What are we doing with the Texan? I think he's going to be. We'll have one more year of the Crows. Okay. Uh, and finally, prediction for the showdown this weekend, and yes. then prediction for Port Adelaide going into September. Okay, so I think Port Adelaide going to win the showdown. I think it's they're due. They're yep. due one. They've got. I love I love the idea of spoiling the victory, like <laughs> spoiling the season. I, I think that's a powerful. I think that's a powerful. Um, that's powerful energy. But I reckon Port are going to win the showdown, and then for their season, I think. Oh, I think they might. Yeah, um, that's just a hard one. It depends if if they can get a home final. I think they could get to a prelim. Yep. Yep. If they don't, I think it might be. Straight sets. Straight, straight sets, Ken out. I I'm think calling they should it. get a home final. So that's not a bad Well, no, shame. they could finish fourth. Yeah, on a top four again. Yeah. 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 It's so close. So yeah. It's very it, hard. It's a great season. It's been a great year. Adelaide's going to be going off its absolute tea kettle this weekend. Absolutely. I'm calling it. I want a showdown on a Friday night next year. Prime time. It's the only game we focus on. None yep. of this Saturday night crap. Friday night. Everyone let's wants go. to watch it. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yep. Just don't bring it across to Marvel Stadium like you know uh, some journalist across here said. Yeah, was, didn't Eddie say that as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that one. <laughs> but anyway, Simeon, this has been great, mate. We'll probably catch up with you during the finals, given Port yeah. Adelaide will be there. But thanks for coming along today, mate. No, thanks for having me. All right, how good was that chat with our man Simeon? How good are things looking over in Adelaide? Well. One side of it, they're really good, and one side, eh, oh, the vibes good. are all right. You know, <laughs> I don't know about that for Adelaide. Who would you rather watch on a week to week basis, Adelaide or Carlton? <laughs> Adelaide, definitely Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the crom. All right, let's do a quick Coleman and Brownlow updates. This is pretty interesting. The Brownlow update at the moment, Cripps is still still inching ahead. He is, yeah. Uh, Didn't despite, get votes on the weekend, despite his team stinking wow. up. Uh, he might have actually of, still snuck into. I can't think, get a vote. No, I don't think you, when you lose by seventy three, I'm pretty sure you can still get three votes. Uh, P. Cripps. Yeah, no. Gary votes. Ablett did it, but no, he was no. having fifty three. No, he's cooked. Exactly. Uh, Dacos wouldn't have got a vote. He was also like the one that you thought might have the uh, sort of grease skids on the way home. Uh, Lucky Neil, interesting vibes. He's just going to turn up, just be like, hey. Hi, just me, saying. most decorated player He's of the 21st well, yeah. century. Three-time Brownlow medal winner. They Question lost, mark. though, so I don't know if he'll be in the he, I don't reckon he would have got no. a vote on the weekend so either. The only big names that I reckon got a vote on the weekend with all the trackers is Sarong. 
one or two they're giving him on most so of the no, There's another three to Isaac Heaney, Heaney that is meaningless. Heaney as well. He was really good. But then the other sort of big names, Cripps, Dacos. Where's bon, Warner on this list? He would have got one or two. Warner is a lot lower. Okay. Yeah, two, they've got him for two as well. Okay. So there you go. Nice one. Uh, as it stands, I still think Cripps, I think Bont has like still a bit of a chance of like dragging it in, but it's just been nah, a couple Nah, I don't think Bont will, Bont will win it. it. It's just there's been too many games where if you look at previous years, he's lower on like yeah. all of his uh, numbers than before, but he's also had a great year because I think also the dogs have actually learnt to be more of a team player yeah. rather than just They're four wins bunch. they got in a row. He's not getting many votes in there just yeah. because so many other players stepped up. So I, I wouldn't be going to Bont either. I'd and be I'm still like, going towards Cripper. I think can, ja can Jason Horn Francis make a run for it? <laughs> no. He would have got no. he would have got three on yeah. Saturday night. He's currently on six votes then. <laughs> well, he, okay, top <laughs> ten awesome. then. I'm, try I'm been, trying to find. I'm trying consistent. to find a bet no. here. No. Sarong <laughs> is is uh, charging up the leaderboard. The last. Uh, Four Zeret, weeks, he's got a lot of votes. Zeret, Noah Anderson are like the weird sort of weird roughies where you're like, how have they already got 24 votes? See, this is me, like, with, this is me with Jason Horn Francis because he's taking he's, votes off He's a lot. He's, he's half had, the amount of votes of everyone else on other people. He's got, he got 15 in, votes last year. Having owned him in Supercoach, there is absolutely zero chance that he is like top 10 brown though. <laughs> zero. He's, zero. He'll get the most votes for Port. I have to grow no my way. hair. Have you heard of Butters? Sandwich. Oh, I'm taking no, that. No, 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 this is. I'm, I just this is, let me shake his hand. This is a, you have to grow your hair out like Jason Horn Francis. <laughs> oh, I used to no, have hair like, no, I, I can't grow my hair. Shake on a cow. Yeah, you can't, yeah. Shake on a cow. I can't grow my hair that far. <laughs> grow it out long. Can, I we just can't. Get, can we just get a sandwich on my He has to wear a wig like Jason Horn Francis for at least three shows next year. <laughs> All right. Are you, that? Are you well, buying the wig? Brown Brownlow show. I've got a wig already. Grand final show. Done. Or at least. it in. Yeah. All right. Top I'll, 10. I'll maybe wait. Top 10. <laughs> top 10. Wait, no, he said, he said lead the Oh, uh, yeah, leading votes for Port. I don't need top 10. He could be 44th and beat Rosie and Butters. Butters every day. Butters is going to smash that one. Yeah, and Rosie. Brownlow is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Coleman. Hogan has probably almost sewn, Race this, over. sewn this up because Kerno is out this week. Ben He's King's not going to kick 10 four. or 12. So. Uh, Kerno would have been a bit of a decent shake had he not rolled his ankle again, considering he's kicked 19 goals in the last two outings. Does that mean I'm going to get my money this weekend? Oh no! no. <laughs> Rising star Ollie Dempsey, my beloved Ollie Dempsey. That He's is heavy, one of heavy favourite. He's a dollar ten. Mm. Best calls I've made this season. Might I still be, reckon he can get. Might be the only correct call I've made this. He season. got a big call actually. I'll that and Carlton getting missing finals. No, that one. That was just a pessimistic one. It's not happening yet. Yet they're still going to make the finals. So you, I reckon he can get beaten, Dempsey. No, nah, I don't think so anymore. I, I was all year. I was saying, well, the Wardos missed a lot of games for uh, an injury, so probably not. I'm trying to. Punch up for McCurchery. Yeah. McCurchery's caught up in the odds too. Because the way that he f he's finishing the season, it's like, oh, him. A lot of people that don't watch North games, though, he had, I think it was about 16 kickouts. He had 11. So he had 11. They, whatever. 11 of 37, and he went by 85% with foot. It's the same as, like, Sheezel last year. Obviously, it was the rising star, but McCurchery's stat pads a bit, so I wouldn't be going him. Holly Dempsey looks... It's amazing how he instantly came in, looked exactly like he'd been playing for Geelong already like, yeah. for six it, it years. He fits in their mould really they, well. He yeah. looks exactly like a Geelong exactly, footballer, yeah. like a surfy tradie, and away we go. Yeah. Outside of this, it's not an official one, but most improved player, this is an old NBA award, this one. Uh, we should have this in the AFL, actually. Tristan Cherry. Yeah, he's my vote. Mac Andrew. Yeah. Massimo D'Ambrosio. He's going to be up there. Yeah. My very good mate, Jake Saligo. Yeah. He doesn't know that we're mates, though. Yeah. He's a one-way So you've been, you're being a creep. I love Saligo. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Clark. Yeah, fair. I thought he was already good last year. So yeah, but he's I, gone I, to the next I, level. It's not most improved. He is improved, but not most improved. I like this. But so, is, so could you say Jack Jack Ginevan, someone improved? And then, like, yeah. I know this is weird, but Isaac Heaney's gone from being a good oh mid forward. No, but he's we got another Sydney Remington. No, he's already a superstar. No, mate. he wasn't. He uh, went away for him to say Lewis Melican. <laughs> for, no, from last year where he was poor, and then he's Brownlow favourite halfway through the year. How is that not Heaney one of the most improved? He was already a superstar at times. You can't say, yeah, oh, at, now at, he's done yeah, it. Yeah, but at times, what about to do it consistently. Errol Gordon? He was never good. Nah, he wasn't good last year. <laughs> he was nah, all Australian to finish second in the Brownlow, you moron. That's the joke. <laughs> what was that over there? Oh, that's the joke going by over Alex's yeah. head. Oh, we have to get, uh, anyway. Sam Durham. He's up there. He's up there. He's been great. Uh, not Sam Walsh. No. No. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to mention Sam Walsh. I just want to say not Sam Walsh. <laughs> How has that guy not gotten better since his rookie year? I love you, Sam Walsh. He was good in his second year, wasn't he? But yeah, since Could then. you also say TDK's improved a lot as yes, well? Yes. TDK, if he had played out the season, he could have run, run, uh, run away with this next to Cherry at least. Let's just so. literally just give a vote on who we actually think. I probably... I'm going. I want to go cherry. Like I think mm. yeah. the raps on him going into this year were not all Australian. I was a bit, was a bit worried. All Australian yeah. ruckman. Yeah. Like, is that's Ro huge. Is it him or Rowan Marshall that gets all Australian ruckman? 
share it. I'm being biased as a North fan, but it's going to be very cool. Do you reckon they pick both? I think Ron Marshall. No, Gorn, 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 Gorn will get it. Ron Marshall will get it. Gorn should not get it. Just think about I the think voting so. profile of the voters, right? It's yeah. all going to be like, oh, we should we should. Yeah, but their team's, gone de- their team's gone downhill. <laughs> David King. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but their team's gone downhill. I reckon it's Rowan Marshall or Cherry. Okay. Sure. Nice one. Uh, that was pretty good. I think that's it. Yeah. Anything else? We want to throw in some super coach gear. We'll be talking about this after the uh, team show yeah, we'll tomorrow, talk about tomorrow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this week, Stats Boy was on the super coach show with me. Good fun, and, yeah. yep. and it was, oh, it's dire. Yeah. Even more oh, dire. So I thought you made the show, not the show. You were dire. Yeah. Your, yeah, your performance yeah, yeah. Was, I was dire. I was great. But the simple <laughs> idea of, uh, I think, Clayton, Oliver now being ruled out. I'm going to have a donut there with uh, Tim English. Kerno and yeah. Tim English. It's like early week carnage already. You're like... <sighs> What are you going to do? Ooh, I need, you Bi- to get I need Billy Dowling to get picked again. Uh, I've still got Sean Manor from heaven, so. Yeah. Or well, Sheezel as well might be out, which I'm very Gross. surprised. All right. Yuck. That'll do AFL Today for today. We'll be back with AFL Today tomorrow, of course, because that'll be the Thursday team show. It's a big one. Uh, thank you to my very good friends, <laughs> the people I probably respect and admire the most in this here office, Wait Alex Donnelly. I'm still waiting for the gag to drop. Where, what did you do with Jim? And the stats boy. <laughs> what did you do with him? Just Is he that. in like a cupboard over there? I, I think, <laughs> hey, John may have said work. you need to be nicer <laughs> to, to the blokes that work for you. Yeah. I just, I really respect the work you do. Uh, and of course, to you Simeon work? for jumping on, talking all things yes. Adelaide. Always a great, great, great chat because just weird things happen in Adelaide. It's like Tazzy, but with more serial killers and two more football teams. So it's always very fun to get him on to talk this out. Very similar to how we have uh, Callum on and Eliza yeah. and McCurdy. It's all great. Is all McCurdy great. back from Paris yet? He's yeah, having so. the best time ever. Jealous. And that's it. Like just getting that insight from on the ground action from yeah. uh, a couple of you know big J journos makes a big difference. So remember to smash across. You know, to remember to smash a like. There you go across all the socials for the AFL Today Show, but also get around the Cricket Today Show, the Football Today podcast, isn't it? Yeah. NBA Australia, NFL Australia, hold all tickets, and of course, the launching very, 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 very soon AFLW Today Show featuring our very own Alex. Next Wednesday, the first half of the season preview drops, and then Friday will be the second half. Eliza Riley booked in for the second half because we'll cover the Perth teams. Very, very cool. It's going to be awesome. Get around them on Facey, IG, Threads, TikTok, YouTube, all the good stuff. I keep saying Threads. (laughs) Threads is crap. We're not using Threads. People use it. Uh, subscribe, star, subscribe, star, and like all of those shows as well, would you? Get around them like me getting around the bet that I made for Carlton to miss the eight. It's the only thing I've got going for me right now. That's it. We'll catch you tomorrow night for the Thursday team show for more AFL today. Until then, look up yourselves and remember, footy is back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.